What's going on, movie goers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to SeaWorld Productions. You guys, I saw Godzilla X Kong The New Empire last night, and boy, oh boy, it did not disappoint. I was so impressed with Godzilla X Kong. It was absolutely exhilarating, entertaining, epic, thrilling, you name it. I did not have a dull moment from start to finish. It was so much fun. And I want to say this, you guys. I really want to say this. For all the morons out there <clears throat> comparing Godzilla Minus One to this, please stop. Please stop. You know what you're getting yourself into when you're entering the monster verse. You know. And trying to compare Godzilla Minus One, a character driven Godzilla film, that felt like a love story or a, a, a love story to Jaws, the original film, you have to understand that these two films are literally on an entire different platform and an entire different audience. That's real. Godzilla minus one and that Godzilla was absolutely terrifying. I was scared of Godzilla. This Godzilla in the MonsterVerse is Heroic. You're rooting for him. He's fun. He's badass. Ugh, I just have to get that off my chest, you guys. But Godzilla X Kong, you guys, is the fifth film in the MonsterVerse. We've had Godzilla. We've had Kong Skull Island. Then we had um, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Godzilla vs. Kong. And now Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. This film was everything I hoped it would be. Literally. The action, I, I, I did, the, the visual effects I thought were amazing. To see the in-depth, you know, exploration of, you know, Hollow Earth and seeing all the unsplored territory was so entertaining to me and so intriguing. I was just like, oh, give me more. Like, give me more. One of the highlights of Godzilla, um, King of the Monsters, was when you saw Godzilla, right, before um, that one dude went to go sacrifice himself and blow himself up. So Godzilla had all the radiation. So he can come back. Was that whole temple underwater? That's the kind of shit I'd like to see. And we got to explore more of that, the lore, in this particular movie. And I just, I appreciated every single second, you guys. This film was definitely a Kong film than any other character. And I like that because majority of these films have been about Godzilla, right? This film explored so much more character depth of Kong and without the language. That's the one thing that was so fascinating to me because there was no dialogue between Kong and any of the monsters. But you understood everything, the emotion, everything was there. Like, honestly, oh, we're talking spoilers, you guys. Sorry, if, if I didn't mention, you know, spoilers, we are talking spoilers. But, you know, the story was so fascinating to me to see Kong still in Hollow Earth and still trying to find, you know, some kind of relative, some kind of apes of his nature so he can, you know, don't feel so lonely. And, you know, right off the bat, the action, you guys, was so just, my eyes were glued to the screen from the very beginning. It was so freaking awesome. I mean, and all the characters and the villains and, you know, uh, Monarch, I actually was really rooting for Monarch. And, you know, I liked the characters, like the human interaction and the, the human characters were so good to me. They were on the scale of what the characters were in Godzilla, no, sorry, in uh, Kong Skull Island. Because every other film, I didn't really care for them. You know, Brian Cranston in the you know, 2014 film, I didn't care for it. So glad they got rid of Millie Bobby, Millie Bobby Brown. I just, her character was so irritating to me. Um, but like Brian Ty... Bri Brian Tyree Henry and Dan Stevens, you know, they were so fascinating feeding off each other. The chemistry was there. They were so funny together. And the little girl, I forgot her name, forgive me. All of that tied into it. Like everybody had a purpose. And that's what I really, really liked about it. I, I really loved it. So what are, what are some of the highlight moments of the film for me? Obviously, when we first see, you know, Kong find the unex unexplored territory in Hollow Earth and him finally interacting with the other apes and how they were just like brutal and mean and terrifying. I was like, oh shit, you know, but he held his own. You know, it was so fascinating to me. And when he first runs into Suko, who is so adorable, you know what I mean? I was like, this little fool. 
Couldn't trust him. Yeah, he always has something up his sleeve. You know what I mean? But you have to understand where he's coming from and what kind of environment he grew up in. Think about it. The Scar King had everybody, all the apes, his slaves, and all the, the, the female apes. And, you know, he was doing the nasty with them and having kids with them. And they had no choice. He was the king of wherever they were at. So you have to understand the backstory of why, the, why these apes are the way they are and how long they've been that way. They've been in captivity. They've been under the control of Scar King, Scar King since the very beginning, not the very beginning, but since he came on the scene. Like that was so, so interesting to me how you can connect on an emotional level with those particular apes. Really? You know what I mean? And that first interaction to see, you know, Kong and everybody and like they're all doing this manual labor and they look, you know, malnourished, not fed, not taken care of. And he's like, what the fuck's going on here? He, he, you, you felt his energy. You felt, you know, the, his uncomfort, his uncomfortability with how these apes were being treated. Like it was so interesting to me. And that one ape that walked up to him, he was like, blah, 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 blah. and he was like, I'm not the one. I mean, just glocked that fool. That shit was so funny to me. It was hilarious. Um, but then, you know, when the Scar King first appeared on screen, his presence, his demeanor, his 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 whole aura was terrifying. I love the character design. I love how he's like lanky, you know what I'm saying? Like, like an orangutan. I loved it. I loved his weapon. Everything about him was badass. And I was like, okay, he might just be up there with King Ghidorah for, you know, one of the best, you know, uh, monsters or you know, kaijus, um, you know, within, you know, this monster universe. He was really, really good and really intimidating. I mean, when they first got down, like that was when he, when he walked up to Kong and saw his tooth, or whatever, he was like, what the hell is this, dog? And it's like, obviously because of Kong. You know, he had that toothache and they had to replace his tooth. And he was like laughing at him like, yo, what's up with this cat? Why you got a gold tooth or a silver tooth? That was so freaking funny to me. But Godzilla and his, his purpose. So when Godzilla, his whole thing in this film, you guys, was when there's an unbalance between nature and he can sense it. He's trying to do something to prevent it or get ready for it, be prepared for it. So he's traveling everywhere. He's fighting Titans and he's trying to power up, so to say, because he can sense something's coming. I don't know if he sensed it was Sh uh, Shimo. Shimo, yeah, Shimo, yeah, Shimo. I don't know if he sensed it was her, you know, in particular, but he was like, okay, I need this much more radiation. And when you see him just going through and just, you know, tearing through Titans and doing his thing and, he, and evolving, I was like, holy shit. Like, he did take a backseat in this film, but I'm fine with that. I am really fine with that. His presence and his screen time was still very much impactful, you guys. Really impactful, you know? And, you know, just, just to see how the whole story all came together with Kong and Suko and, you know, Scar King and, you know, the, the, the Billingers and the, 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 the tribe that was missing or whatever. And, you know, through the Hollow Earth, I loved all of that backstory and the purpose of the little girl. Like, it was so much fun. I was like, damn, like, I can't, I, like, I was, like I said, I saw it last night and I went to work and I kept thinking about this movie because it was just so on my mind. I was like, I definitely want to experience this again in IMAX because I saw it in Dolby Cinema and it was still an incredible experience. All the action sequences, you know, it was so freaking awesome. And Kong, when he got that Infinity Gauntlet and you see why he got it because of the frostbite, because of Shimo, you know, that's just how powerful she was. But she was being controlled by this little dagger piece from freaking Scar King, you know? So I was like, oh, so that's why. Okay. So I was like, okay, everything's coming into play now. Now I know why he has her as like a pet or whatever. His whole thing was, you know, he, he was trapped down there by Godzilla and he wanted out essentially. You know what I mean? He wanted out of the hollow earth and he wanted to go up. And, you know, <clears throat> now he had this opportunity because, you know, when Kong escaped Shimo's blast or whatever, <clears throat> you know, there were a couple of apes that had followed him. And, you know, they were like, oh, shit, like, there's this is something he's been talking about, Scar King. And you know, let me go back to, you know, my, my leader and tell him and inform him, like, this is our opportunity or this is your opportunity, boss, to, to, to get up out of Hollow Earth. And he took that opportunity and he was riding <clears throat> Shimo all the way there. It was so epic, you guys. I'm telling you, it was so much fun. The third act, holy shit, it was incredible. The third act was so fucking 
good. So good on every single level. When Kong has to go ask Godzilla for help and he goes up out of the Hollow Earth <clears throat> and, you know, he first interacts and he, he gets up out of there with his Infinity Gauntlet hand and he's like, Roar! and then you, you see Godzilla, like he sets that shit and he, Godzilla's on top of a pyramid or a building and he jumps off and they, you know, they interact again. That was so awesome. That little, small little brief fight scene was so dope. And to see Kong beat the living shit out of Godzilla. He beat the brakes off of him. He was mad because he's like, yo, just stop. We need to talk. I need your help. And, you know, he, he wasn't listening. He was like, okay, that's it. You just see him go, bam, bam. But like a full-blown ground pound on Godzilla. I was like, oh, that's the revenge. That's the Kong I was waiting for. That's the Kong we wanted in Godzilla versus Kong, you guys. But, you know. I get it. Adam Wingard is, you know, he's that's, that's a Godzilla boy. That's his boy. So I get why Godzilla won. But, you know, that whole third act, when it all came together, it was so fucking fascinating. And when Godzilla and Mothra show, Mothra, and I love the whole connection of Mothra and the little girl. I was just like, oh my God, this is so majestic. This is, this is beautiful. It was beautiful, man. I, I really loved it, man. I, oh, I can't, I love the fact that, you know, we got to go back to the, to the lore of Kong Skull Island and all the things like that. I, all that stuff that really played into the an integral part to the story that came full circle. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. But, you know, that, that final battle scene when Godzilla and Kong land, land in the hollow, you know, the hollow earth. And, you know, that shit was so dope. I, like, I was geeking out so hard. I was like, oh, shit. Like, you see Scar King and Shimo, like, looking over. And you just see Godzilla and Kong, boom, and they're running. Like, let's go out. <laughs> Geeking out so hard. It was awesome, dude. And he jumps on Godzilla, and this is this moment, uh, you know, the shot of each of the, the monsters and the titans in their faces. Oh my god, that was so badass. So badass. And the whole gravity aspect of it, how they were like losing control, like, oh shit, what's going on? And then when they finally got out of the Hollow Earth or whatever, you know, Scar King is doing his thing with Shimo trying to, you know, take over, you know, the trying to take over the Earth. And, you know, fucking, oh, my God, dude, that's, you guys, I, I can't stress enough. This third act was so, so pitch perfect, like, literally. And I love the fact that it was fast-paced. There was no wasting any time. I felt like everything, every little character moment, every, it served its purpose, and it was quick. And that's what I want from these movies, especially from the MonsterVerse films, you know what I mean? <clears throat> that's what I really, really love and adore. And, you know, even Suko, he served his purpose. You know what I mean? He was <laughs> that little piece of shit. He served his purpose. You know, he got to destroy the little dagger that controlled Shimo at the end of the film. And when Scar King grabbed his little ass, he's like, come here. You know, and then Kong punched that fool. And then they all work together now that Shimo is no longer under the control of Scar King. That shit was so dope. And then Kong just literally just grabbed him. And then she froze him. It was so epic. And he just literally body slammed him and just destroyed and broke him down. I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it was so fucking awesome. And then, of course, you know, the ending, man. I was just like, Kong finally has his purpose. He finally has his people. He rode up on, you know, Shimo and Suko's right there like, wah, wah, wah. you know what I mean? And it was just so cool. I love that. She was like kind of a pet to him. You know what I mean? Like, that's cool. That's, you know, she's definitely going to be back in future projects within the MonsterVerse. I definitely want to see more of Shimo. She's one of my favorite characters introduced. Suko is one of my favorite characters. There's just so many great characters in this film. Like, really, so many great characters. But I now I want to see Kong struggle because there are still that side of the apes who were very loyal to the Scar King. And they tried to kill Kong. So I want to see that. You know, I want to see how Kong handles that whole thing. And honestly, I want to see Kong get a wife. I want to see him do his thing. But he seems like he's pretty much bigger than everybody. Like all the other apes, he was just more massive than everybody. So hopefully within the sequel of this movie, you'll see Suko. He's a, like he's much older. He's kind of, you know, taking up for Kong. And Kong's kind of like, you know, I'm laying back now. I'm doing my thing with my girl, you know, because eventually I feel like, yeah, you know, Suko is going to become Kong's son. That's that's really what it is, you know, and I, and I can't I can't wait. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for more MonsterVerse films, you guys. Adam Wingard really impressed me with this direction, with the storytelling. I honestly, I give this a slight edge, and I put this above Kong Skull Island as my favorite film in the MonsterVerse. It's, I'm telling you guys, it was so entertaining from start to finish. Damn near no flaws with me. You know, I didn't have any issues with it. 
you know, it's, it's, this is a popcorn movie that I went into and to, to have a great time. And, you know, it, 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 it served everything perfectly to me. Everything on the platter was delicious. Everything, you guys. But post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought of Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, and where do you rank it in the MonsterVerse films? For me, it's number one. Let me give you my, my, my ranking real quick. So, we, we'll go number one, Godzilla X Kong. Number two, Kong Skull Island. Number three, mm, King of the Monsters. I give it a slight edge over Godzilla vs. Kong. And then number six, I'm going Godzilla. Push your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. And thank you guys for taking time out of your day for watching Zero Productions. Peace.